Today, I'm going to show you how to get started immediately using vCarve Pro version 9. I'll take you from design all the way to generating the G-code file. I'll show you how to import photos and how to convert them into vectors the CNC can read. For this example, I find a logo on the internet. Now keep in mind the bit has to travel around all the letters in your design, so don't pick anything that's super tight if you're wanting to cut it out. I right click and choose copy image and paste this into Microsoft Paint. Next I remove all the black background the picture leaves behind. Then I save the picture and open up vCarve Pro. Once vCarve opens, select Create a New File. Next, the software is going to ask you information in regards to width, height, and thickness of the board you're getting ready to cut. I suggest a digital caliper for easy, accurate measuring when it comes to thickness. Next, vCarve gives you the option of where you'd like to home your bit, and I chose Center. I hadn't determined my board yet, so I left everything as default. Let's import our Christmas photo we saved in Paint, and we'll do that by clicking the Import Bitmap for Tracing folder in the top right hand corner of the Tools pane. Then locate and open the image. Once imported, we have to convert this photo into a vector, which vCarve can read as lines. We do this by clicking the Trace Bitmap Bird icon. Next, I use all the sliders on this page to give me the best legible picture. Then I choose Preview and click Apply. Now I click the Transform Mode button. This is the button on how you grab, shrink, and move things around. You can't tell, but we have two pictures, one on top of each other. Grab and drag the original picture off, and then I just hit the Delete key to delete it. We don't want it. This then leaves the vector lines underneath it that vCarve Pro can read. Now we have an image that our CNC can use, but sometimes the lines don't get converted perfect, and we need to correct them. So let me show you how to edit these lines. I'll click the Draw Line tool to draw a new line to straighten this up. And I'm just going to cut out the messed up part. This seems to be the fastest way to clean up something like this. Note, right clicking ends that line. Now I need to click the Node Editing Mode Mouse Pointer tool. This allows the line to be edited. Once selected, I am then able to choose Interactive Trim Scissors. These scissors will cut the line and snap it to join the pre-existing line, preventing any gaps. Having a gap in the line is called an open vector, and having an open vector will prevent you from being able to build your file until it's found and the gap in the line is fixed by closing it. By right-clicking, it ends the line. Next, I grab the interactive trim scissors. These scissors will cut the line and will snap and merge the line to the existing line. Now we need to verify that all open vectors are closed, just meaning that we have a complete circle on this Merry Christmas. We do that by right clicking and choosing selection, then click select all open vectors. Here it says all of them are closed and this file is perfect and we're ready to go ahead and choose a bit and save it as a G-code file. To do this, we choose tool paths in the upper right hand corner. Select the item we want the tool path to cut. Then choose the profile tool paths option. You'll notice the cut depth option. This is how deep you want the bit to cut. If you put a cut depth deeper than your board, the program will warn you that you're cutting through your board and have something underneath it. Next, click Select button under Tool. Choose the type of bit you wish to use. V-bits are for engraving and N-mills are for cutting. I'm using an N-mill with a thickness of 0.125 for this example. When it comes to feed rate and spindle rate, I always start out with 15 inches a minute. The spindle rate can easily go faster, but with hardwoods, I like to take it a little slower. I can take it up to about 20 or more with softer woods. Under machine vectors, you can select the type of cut you wish to have, outside, inside, or on the line cut. Next, you can check the box to add tabs. If you're cutting all the way through, I suggest using tabs as the piece you cut out will begin to hop around into your bit and can screw up your workpiece. Next, I give this cut a name. This makes more sense when you have multiple cuts and you're trying to keep them all separate with different depths being cut. Click Calculate, then click OK to the reminder that you'll be cutting all the way through your board. 
In 3D Preview mode, select Reset Preview, then select Preview All Toolpaths. Resetting every time clears all the old adjustments you made. Also, every time you change something, you need to recalculate by right-clicking on the profile you named and choose Recalculate. Here you can see exactly what your piece is going to look like after you've cut it out. Also, you can see where you have your tabs added. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I didn't know my board size when I started designing at my desk. To update this information later, go to Edit, then select Job Size and Position, and you can edit the dimensions there. To save this G-code as a file, click the Save Toolpath icon. Select the file type you need for your CNC. I'm using a Bob Z3 CNC, and I use Gerbil Inch G-Code. Make sure all your profiles are checked, and save it to an easy-to-find location. Then open the file as you normally do. I use the Universal G-Code Cinder on my computer. Directions on how to use that are on my other CNC videos. And that is how you import a picture and convert it to a vector and cut it out with VCarve Pro 9. Chop, chop!